In the 1940s, uh, Professor Streeter of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology in Washington, D.C., proposed a system for classifying the stages of human development. His system arranged human embryos in 23 numbered sta stages based on their difference, differences in appearance. The Carnegie system of classification was used around the world until the 1970s when a more refined system was proposed by Dr. Ronan O'Reilly of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology, now in San Diego, California. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Although Aristotle, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the 4th century BC, he did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolute, absolutely no scientific training. The first uh, stage is ad adafk, and you'll have to apologize my, for my pronunciation. Uh, this is from Surah uh, Tariq 6. He is created from a drop emitted. This Arabic term refers to the forceful emission of fluids which occurs during ejaculation in the male and ovulation in the female. The male secretions, called semen, contain the spermatozoa, and the female secretions, called follicular fluid, contain the ovum. This is the stage of fertilization and the uh, nutfa, and after the, this is what we call the, the zygote, uh, referred to in the Quran as the nutfa, and the nutfa undergoes uh, division, which we call cleavage, as it passes down the uterine tube. And so these are the stages of the nutfa here as it undergoes uh, cell division. Uh, it is, this term is used several times in the Quran when referring to the beginning of development. After examining all these references, it is concluded that nutfa re refers to the small drop of fluid containing the sperm and the ovum. The term nutfa is also used to refer to the dividing zygote as it undergoes cleavage, cell division, and passes along the uterine tube to enter the uterus. This surah says, then he made his progeny from a quintessence of the nature of fluid despised. Sulala is an Arabic term, refers to the gentle extraction of the germ or sex cells from the millions that are uh, produced. There are 300 to 500 million sperms in the ejaculate of a healthy young male. Only one of these is extracted from the semen to fertilize the ovum. This shows a, a photograph of the millions of sperm uh, when they are ejaculated and only one of these several million sperms are, is drawn out, which is what is suggested by the word uh, sulala. Now the same in the case of the uh, ovary, uh, uh, only one ovum reaches maturity and is expelled from the ovary, and it is extracted from the many thousands that are available in the ovary. Again, the idea of extraction or sulala. The next stage is Amshaj, Amshaj Surah ad Der 2. Verily, we recreated man from a mixture of a germinal drop. Uh, Amshaj, then, is an Arabic term is used in the Quran to describe the mixing of the sperms and the ovum. During fertilization, uh, the ovum rotates, rotates within the fluid containing the sperms until one of them is successful in penetrating its covering layers, which we call the corona radiata and the zona pellucida, which is this layer here. 
Yeah, I'll read it again in English. Uh, it's Surah Abbasa 19. He created a new individual from Nutva and immediately planned and programmed him. That was the first one we had. Oh, there it is. Uh, so al kalk then, is an Arabic term which means coming into being, and it's used when referring to the fertilized ovum or zygote. Here you can see the uh, nuclei from the sperm and the ovum uniting to form a new cell, which is the zygote or nutfa, and uh, then uh, here's the zygote or nutfa again, but it's just getting ready to divide into two cells, which we call the dividing zygote or the dividing nutfa. The next stage, El Takdir, which is the same verse that was just repeated. This Arabic term means the determination of characters and appears to refer to the fact that from the beginning, the zygote or nutfa contains genetic factors in the chromosome, contain the genes, which determine the color of the future person's eyes, hair, and skin, and all its other characteristics, such as the appearance of the face and the body. Al Harth, uh, Surah Al Bagara, Ayah uh, 223, your wives are as a tilth unto you. This Arabic term refers to the plowing of the earth and the sowing of the seed in it. This term is used in reference to sexual intercourse, plowing, and implantation of the blastocyst, sowing of the seed. This analogy is a very good one since the blastocyst develops root like structures called chorionic villi, which derive oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood, just as the roots of the plant, shown here, uh, derive their nutrients from the soil. Next uh, is Alaka. Let's have the next slide. Uh, Alaka is uh, Surah al Muminim Ayah 14. Then we created the drop into a leech-like structure, then of that leech-like structure, we made a chewed-like substance. Uh, Alaka refers to a leech-like appearance, especially at about 22 days, as shown in this slide. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo, about 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing, and that it is truly, the human embryo is truly leech-like. The leech-like embryo is attached to the chorionic sac, which is embedded in the maternal blood and attached to the maternal endometrium, or the lining of the uterus. This is uh, the mudga stage, Surah al muminim ayah 1 to 14, and I repeated that before. Then we created the drop into a leech-like structure. Then of that leech-like structure, we made a chewed-like substance which you can see here, and begins during the sixth week. Next uh, stage is uh, al Kissa Bil Lan, Surah Al Mu Minim Ayah 14. Then we close the bones with flesh. So in the previous stage, then we had the bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. So this Arabic term means a clothing uh, with flesh, and after the bones form, they become surrounded or clothed by flesh or muscles, which acquire attachments to them. These muscle attachments permit movements of the skeleton to occur. Now this is the final stage of development called al uh, Then we developed of him another creation. Uh, al means uh, growth or coming into being. This undoubtedly refers to the fetal period when there is growth and differentiation of the embryo that developed in the embryonic period. The rate of body growth during the fetal period is remarkable, especially between the ninth and 16th weeks. You can notice how quickly it's growing in this uh, nasha stage or uh, fetal period as we call it. The next uh, stage is El Kablia. This sir, says that the duration of pregnancy and separation is 30 months. This uh, Arabic term refers to the viability or ability of the human fetus to survive outside the uterus. 
There is no definite time when survival of the fetus is assured, but it is generally accepted now that a fetus that is 24 weeks or older has a reasonable chance of survival. Survival of fetuses 22 to 24 weeks old has only been become possible in the last few years uh, when better methods of providing care for premature infants uh, were developed. So uh, the period of uh, viable embryo or fetus would be here at 24 weeks. We used to say 26, 28, but now with better incubation, uh, some babies at 24 weeks can survive. And we've even had some at 22 weeks, but this takes highly sophisticated incubation uh, to do that. So this uh, period then is the uh, period of uh, viability or the ability of the human fetus to survive. The next stage is the al Hadana, al Rahimia. So this uh, stage refers to the final stages of fetal development in the uterus when the fetus could survive if born prematurely, but it remains in the uterus where it is supported or nourished by the mother. In most cases, therefore, the uterus acts as an incubator for the premature infant. Weight gain during these final weeks is phenomenal as the fetus accumulates fat and is gradually prepared for birth. This last uh, Aya is Sura Abasa, Aya 19 and 20. From a drop, he created him and immediately planned and programmed him. Then he makes his passage easy. This uh, Arabic term uh, means to make the passage easy. It is well known that as the time of birth approaches, the maternal tissues of the cervix and the joints of the pelvis become looser so that the passage of the fetus through the fetal canal will be facilitated. This process, initiated by hormones in the mother's blood, accelerates during the early stages of labor or delivery of the baby. As the amniochorionic uh, sac, that is the bag of waters surrounding the baby, expands near the time of birth, it protrudes into the cervix, that is the neck of the uterus, and causes it to dilate. When the amniochorionic sac ruptures, the amniotic fluid provides a slippery pathway for the fetus to pass along the cervix and vagina to the outside of its mother. All the above occurrences facilitate the birth of the baby, that is, they make the passage easy. The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Muhammad could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function.